Good morning. Welcome to another video by Antiques Arena. My name's Walter O'Neill. It's <laughs> 20 past five in the uh, morning, and I'm off to uh, Splot and Besma buy-in today, guys. So it's going to be a bit of a day out. See what bits of stock I can buy. Um, see if I can find something really nice and satisfy my need and craving for buying antiques. Before I start, I done a video yesterday just to chat on the pros and cons of the difference between selling online and in the uh, boot sales versus the shop and that now, just, just a little chat. And in that chat I gave a shout out to Nick and Andrea and to Kirsten. Basically they done a talk, a uh, little talk show uh, a couple of days earlier and give me a big shout out and it actually helped it got me quite a few uh, extra subscribers for those I was grateful but when I was looking at the uh, the title on the, the screen to basically repay the favour and say thank you I got Kirsten's name wrong I actually said it was Kirsten's collectibles it wasn't now the video uh, the lady in question, lovely lady, she's called Kirsten's Curiosities and I'm going to put a link underneath this video for you to go to her page. What she does, she goes to auctions, she buys miscellaneous lots and then shows you what's in the lots at the end of the day. So interesting videos, especially if you want to go to auction houses and just buy job lots and things. Um, I used to do that myself. It's a really good way of getting cheap stock and a good variety of stock. So again, Nick and Andrea Hills guys and Kirsten's Curiosities. Thank you both for the big shout out. Kirsten, I'm sorry I had the, the name wrong yesterday darling. But I am very grateful. So, it's Saturday morning, 25 past 5. No Sandra again guys, she really is. She's not liking getting up very early. We've had a bit of time off now because of the winter. And she isn't like getting up early, I tell you what now. She, <laughs> through the summer is no problem, but these cold, wet, dark winter nights, she's not that big on it. So, I'm, uh, I'm off on my own. As you know, I won't film whilst I'm in the actual car boot sale, but uh, I'll do little snippets here and there. I'll try and get a little bit of footage if I can. Show you the video. Uh, show you the boots. I'll get a little film of uh, Bessma. Show you if there's anything there much. Um, as same with Splot. If I can, I'll get a couple of seconds of footage and that. I don't want to offend anybody because I know not all dealers like going on camera. And to be honest, with you, not everybody at a car boot sale is 100% allowed to be there as in some of them may be on benefits or something and they just work in a one-off car boot sale because they need a bit of money um, so I wouldn't do that to anybody but I will I'll pan out and I'll get a couple of seconds of footage and that um, so that you can see what I'm uh, you know what the buy-ins like uh, let me rephrase that what my options are going to be like from how many cars are there it's actually raining again uh, again um so Bessemer's going to be pretty quiet today unless it dries up in cardiff but i'm optimistic this splot come in this morning so fingers crossed i'm actually going more on the hunt see if i can find anything chinese <laughs> that's what i'm going for i don't care if it's smashed to pieces guys i've spoke to a few of my dealer friends down here who house clearances and things and I've actually said to them, I'm looking for Chinese porcelain, um, half pieces, fragments, damaged items. To be honest with you, I'd rather damaged items at the moment because I haven't got enough knowledge. <coughs> um, the knowledge base isn't there yet. Um, you know, I'm trying. I can read the, the ring or character marks now. I have a bit better understanding of the patterns and things, but. Some of the easy things I can do then Canton and Nanking and things like that I can do that stuff now But I want I'd rather Either just pay a few pounds for broken pieces or have fragments given to me and things like that Rather than spend good money on vases that 
they, for all I know, they're 19th century copies. The Chinese market is very much a buyer beware. There's a lot of fakery going on. Um, you know, I was reading recently how people, to make a piece older, because in 1891 they were actually put in China or made in China after 1900 something. Um, 1891 they introduced it as China and after 1900 it was made in China and you know the quality was still good enough for people to polish the marks off the underside which would leave a tiny dip in the glaze but you've got to really know what you're looking for um, then you got a famous I think he was French uh, faker Samson um, faking all the immemorial Chinese and that so there's a lot of fakes going on with Chinese not to mention the Chinese fake in the earlier periods themselves so it's definitely a buyer beware market I am cautious or gonna be cautious and only buy I'm not gonna put too much money into a piece until I'm comfortable I know what I'm doing let's put it that way once I'm comfortable guys I will put hundreds into one piece I don't care but for now, it's good. I'm hoping for the broken, damaged pieces that I can still study the glazes and the porcelain bodies and things. So that's that's the main reason for me going down here today. For those of you who watched my video a few days back where I went out buying, actually I went selling last Sunday and buying at the same time. I had some lovely things. Um, the lamp I decided to keep in my own home. I'm going to uh, get it rewired and keep it in my own home. But I'm not going to do. I'm not going to use it as a ceiling rose or ceiling lamp. What I've decided to do is I'm going to buy a really nice black wrought iron uh, bracket, get four wrought iron chains, and hang it, mount it, and hang it off the wall with um, a length of flex to go to a plug. So it's going to be very much like a wall light. And I haven't decided yet, I got a porch way on my house, I haven't decided yet whether to use it as my porch light or put it in maybe in the passageway by the uh, French doors, I haven't decided. But I'm definitely going to keep the light, I do love it. And let's be honest, I can sell that anytime I want. Architectural antiques or antiques that you can use in your home, you know, such as chandeliers, lights, um, small bits of furniture, you know, it really does sell well. And to be honest, with you, you'll always be able to sell it, it's not going to go out of fashion. People like character, and I don't know what whether the, what the right word would be, certainly not class. Character, yes, but they like a certain country house look, if you like, and they don't want it all to be brand new. They like that look that there's pieces there that have been there for generations so I'll always be able to sell that type of stuff so anyway as I was saying we're off the spot gonna see my few regular dealers hopefully come on with some nice little pieces off to Bessemer fingers crossed Bessemer's full if it dries up it will be I'll get some videos for you um, Hopefully back at the shop by about 10 up past 10. My mother's opening up this morning for an hour or two. And then I'll be taking over, as I said, 10 up past 10, somewhere on the day. And what I'll probably do then whilst I'm at the shop is film and show you the pieces of stock I have bought today. It's all good. Uh, let me see before I uh, cut off for now if there's anything else. I'm trying to think. I'm going to do, later on Monday, I'll release a video probably for my, uh, I'm going to do a special competition, I decided, I couldn't decide what I was going to do for celebrating and reaching a thousand subscribers, but what I've decided to do guys, is I'm going to do a special competition, and I'm going to have three winners, I'm going to pick three pieces of stock out of the shop, and I'm going to give away three t-shirts. I won't get the t-shirts made until I know the winners because then I'll have your size of t-shirt. You 
you can order, I'll order what size you want and I'll have the embroidered antiques arena like I have on my two seconds like that but I, so you'll have a little t-shirt with antiques arena across but there like I wear at the shop so that's what I've decided to do sorry I'm not running around naked around the town screaming I've made a thousand and I'm not jumping in the sea when it's minus four degrees can't do it it was snowing yesterday so what I've decided to do will be a big giveaway three pieces of stock for three different people and three t-shirts so yeah yeah I think I'm happy with that um, rather than just make one person happy I make three happy and of course I didn't do a competition for January anyway so Monday evening probably I'm gonna release a video guys showing three pieces of stock and you'll probably have till the end of February somewhere around there to get your name in there'll be a free competition as always I don't charge a penny don't ask for nothing as long as you're subscribed just leave your name under the video and uh, I'll end you in the competition so look out for that one on Monday guys Monday night this video is going out tomorrow so this one's going out Sunday so yeah Monday Monday I'll post the video for you and that's gonna be my way of saying thank you to everybody for supporting me basically I appreciate every bit of it guys um, so if I, if I can't think of anything else I want to say before I get to Splot the next time now you see me will be at Splot and Best Mode, which is still a fair run for me so I'll see you soon guys Okay, so we've arrived at Splot. Um, I must admit, I've got butterflies in my belly again, and that is exactly why every single one of us does this. The thrill of the hunt, the treasure hunt, the, the not knowing, the excitement, the adrenaline. We get, the feeling, the only way I can explain it to you is, I don't know if you've ever won on the lottery, or done a bet on the horses or something, and your bets come in, you know that butterfly and excitement feeling you get then? We get that every single time we go out on a treasure hunt. We get the excitement, the adrenaline, the rush. And if you find something, oh God, it's the best thing in the world. Don't matter what you make. I've been excited and over the moon just to find um, a really old piece with history behind it. I don't care if I haven't made no money on it. Just been happy to have it and own it. But anyway, I'm here. That's block. There's only four cars inside me. The car park is empty. You can see it's uh, all empty out there. Here's uh, Spot Market, guys. Uh, as you can see, it's a very industrial building down here. We're not far from the docks. So, we're in the industrial part now, let's put it that way. And I'm all excited. There's cars in there that I can see. I'm going to go in and I'm going to set uh, get get out there and get looking and hopefully they're all set up. See you soon. As you can see it's quite empty a minute. Not many in here. Okay guys, um, well we're now about half past eight in the morning and I've elected not to go to Bessemer Road. It is hammering down, uh, really raining heavy. So Bessemer's gonna be relatively poor today now. There's gonna be no middle ground, only around the edge under cover. Um, and I bought so well in Splot. It is unbelievable the stuff I bought. Um, I've spent a bit of money. It have not all come in for nothing, so, you know, don't think it's all coming for a pound or two. Some pieces I've paid 10 and 15 pound for, but I really have got a wonderful collection, guys. And I did find a piece of Chinese porcelain. I did, I did, I did, yes. Now, uh, all I gotta do now is figure out exactly how old it is. It looks an old piece. It does look an old piece, guys. So I'm looking forward to doing a little bit of research on that, find out what I can about that. Um, I've had weapons, I've had gold, I've had silver, I've had German porcelain, I've had Scandinavian pottery, I've had Remeniki va glass vases. What a selection. Um, 
what can I say? I'm trying to think of everything I bought. I've had crystal coming out my ears. All in all, I've gone through probably about 130, 140 pounds. So it really has been an expensive morning today. Uh, for me anyway, I normally buy my stuff so cheap, it's unbelievable. But at the same time, really love the pieces I bought. There's nothing I bought today I'm not happy with. You have to excuse all the bumps now, guys. The roads down in Cardiff, down in Splot are atrocious. I know why we pay council tax, honestly. You'd think they, or even car tax, you'd think they'd repair the roads. Um, yeah, what can I say? <laughs> freezing cold it is bitter down it and it's empty what i've done because i haven't been able to film down inside i got a couple of uh, seconds for you i know but because i haven't been able to film inside i've done photographs and i'm going to splice them in before i do the uh, stock i'm going to splice in a couple of the photos of the stalls uh, some of the stalls down here and some of the how it looks just so you can see how it looks do you know I know you're not going to believe me. A stall there today selling tractor buckets. I photographed them. Tractor buckets. You know the scoops that go on diggers and that. He got a van full of scoops at the boot sale. Honest to God, you don't know what you're going to see at these boot sales. Shocking. Do you know if I was a farmer? Perfect. To be honest, I was considering them as plant pots. I thought, I wonder if I could buy those cheap enough and sell them as really unusual plant pots. Yo, know, they're never going to rust. What are they, two inches thick of pure steel? Um, oh, iron. I'm shocked the hell out of me, I did. I uh, haven't seen something that good for a while. Um, Lord of Bayonets down there again. They were a bit overpriced for what I can afford um, to make a good profit on them. I did, however, buy a job lot of weapons. Um, oh, curved swords, or curved daggers, rather. I had a sword stick. Um, I've had a few nice pieces of weapons. They'll, um, some of them are going to go to John, some of them will go to the shop. And I, I give 20 quid for a job lot of weapons, guys. Really, 20 quid. And in that, I chucked a fishing gaff as well. A gaff is the hook that you hook in the back of the gill to rip a decent sized fish out of the, uh, you know, a pike or something really big out of the water. Um, rather than a, a net. So I had a gaff in with that. Now I know the last gaff I had, I sold 15 or 20 quid just for that. So my money's back just on that without all the weapons. Um, and I did promise my boy a machete for Christmas. Well, I got a really couple of nice pieces here. He may choose one of them instead of the machete because we've been looking for a machete. We ordered one on Amazon. And when it came back, it was um, he'd made a mistake, and it was uh, a karate and martial arts training one. So it was like a hard resin machete. So we weren't happy with that. And of course, as you know, John collects all the weapons. I got a couple of revolvers and a couple of pen knife ones. So all in all, really, really strange bag today, and a good bag. Hope you enjoyed looking at those few photographs. Um, as you can see, this block was quiet this morning. Not a lot of people walking around at all. Um, and to be honest with you, only half full of sellers, which for February is quite shockingly poor. The only good thing where there was, a good half a dozen of the dealers I buy off were there. They wanted to sell, they wanted to work with me. So, I get the stuff cheaper when I buy it off the general public, but then you have to dig for it. 
Um, you have to find the stuff in boxes, things like that. At least when I walk up to my friends and I go, right, what have we got on today? They know what I like, they know what I can pay for the stuff and still make a decent profit. Um, fortunately today, they were there. Even though I've spent a bit of money today, they were there, so it's all good. Um, but as I said, I'm, I hope you like to have a look at the photographs. I couldn't film. Um, to be honest, I, I can't afford to get banned from Splot or Besma by filming. Uh, that's the last thing I want. You know, it's all right. Other people may go to a car boot sale and not care if they get thrown out or stop going there. But this is where I get my stock. This is my livelihood. So I can't risk getting thrown out of it, guys. But what I can do is photographs of some of the stalls and things like that. Um, what do you think of those tractor buckets, huh? <laughs> when they crazy? Um, I love the boot sales. Do you know, you just never know where you're going to find. Last year was a Victorian horse uh, horse carriage. You know, the carriages pulled by the horses. Um, boats, cars, camper vans, you name it. It all comes to a boot sale to be sold. So, yeah. I got a car full of stock. I'm happy going home. And the best part about it is I'm going to be home in time to open up the shop. What more can I ask for, guys? Really, really, really pleased. I can't wait to show you some of the bits I've bought. I'll show you all that now at the shop. So that's me pretty much done now until I get back home. So I'll, uh, I'll see you soon. Show you some of my bits. Stock. <laughs> Bye, guys. Okay guys, so I'm back at the shop. You have to excuse my appearance now, I wasn't working the shop today. Um, I was having a full day of buy-in and my mother was going to run the shop today for me, or at the very least I was going to come back later. Um, it's about 20 to 9, somewhere under there, so i got 20 minutes or so before I open yet. Um, so I'm going to give you a little look now at some of the things I've bought today. And to be totally honest with you, I'm really, really pleased with what I've bought. First things first, as you know, I went there looking for some Chinese porcelain and I have found a piece. Now, the exact age and term for this piece, I don't know. It's got a chip on the rim there. It's a marked piece, in fact. And it comes with a free silver earring. <laughs> I paid a pound for this. This vase cost me a pound and I got what looks to be a solid silver earring inside the pot. So it's got to be a pound of scrap by there, so that it's free. So I'll enjoy it later on now this afternoon. I'll be having a little look on the computer, seeing what I can find out about this. Um, it was one of two things. It's either an early piece of Chinese or it's a worthless piece of Chinese because the time taken in the decoration is either a piece of ballast ware where they would use cheap porcelains to weight down the hull of the ship um, or it's quite an early piece of Chinese but one or the other I'm gonna find out by the end of the day and I don't care if it's old or 20th century, 19th century, 18th century, it doesn't matter because I need examples of all periods so I'm gonna enjoy looking at that one guys and for a pa for free a pound but I had a bit of silver so for free that one next year we got well I'm not a hundred percent it's an absolutely spectacular double gourd vase double gourd being the shape now it's two layers of glass it's cased well it's three layers of glass if you like that it's got the opaque inside so you can see the lines there. So it's got the opaque inner, then a green, then it's cased in clear. So it's a quality vase. Um, just in case you didn't see that then. And the base. Now, I'm not 100%, but it has a look of Rahiman or Ramaki, or, or Remaniki. Um, it looks along them lines. I'm not 100% if it is or isn't. You know, it's not a million miles off, two foot tall really nice interesting piece of glass quality as well guys so let's something for me to research there or for one of my uh, glass men on the site to give me a heads up next i got a little stamp box like a little treasure chest 
fully stamped up, reg number and made in England on, on the base. Lovely patina on there. So I'll sit on a gentleman's desk and he take a stamp out, close it up. It's a really nice little stamp box. Sorry, the Scandinavian vase cost me six pound. The stamp box cost me three pounds. And I like that. The last one I had I sold, I think it was about 20, 25 quid. Somewhere on by there. I think I got one more now in the cabinet, priced at around 20. Uh, but this one's nice because it's got the Made in England and the Reg number. <coughs> if you like Art Deco, you're going to love this, guys. Now, this piece here is 1950s. It's hammered, so it's been hammered first. It's got this beautiful hammered finish on it, as you can see it there. Then it's been chromed. Beautiful chrome finish. And this, I don't think it's big, like, I think it's more celluloid. Um, an early form of plastic. Uh, beautiful tray. Has a registration number of 858397, which is dating it somewhere around the 50s. And a, a maker's mark, believe it or not, of PB over B. So easy to do the research, just go online, take me a few minutes and I'll know exactly who made it and everything else. But what a beautiful tray. If you like Art Deco, then that's for you. Now, the tray stands me in a tenner. But what do I rate a tray like that? It's gotta be 35 quid, 35, 40 pound for a real nice Art Deco tray like that. Imagine a nice set of glasses on that on the table, that's gonna be really beautiful, guys. I love that tray. I'm not normally one for chrome, but I tell you what, that's got a real nice look about it. Love the handles too. They are done for almost like a finger grip. Really nice. Pleased with that. Bit of quality. Next, what have we got here? Let me see. Ah, oh, love this. I haven't had one of these for a while, guys. Now what we have here is a beautiful, it's a plate or charger in cobalt blue and it's Valencia, um, Finland, there we go, Arabia, in, uh, Finland, but it's the Valencia uh, cobalt blue charger. Dates to about 1960s, lovely design, lovely deep colours. Now this stands me in for £15, but the last one of these I had was a lot of money. I haven't done the research yet to see how much they are pulling now, but what a beautiful piece of design. There we go. Anything Finland, Denmark, all that Scandinavian or, you know, that real nice studio design, really good money. Um, I don't know if I said, it cost me £15. But, I do rate it. And to be honest with you, if you don't go in the shop, it'll go either go on my wall at home or it'll go on the internet and it'll sit on my website until I get what I want for it. Value-wise, I see that quite comfortably at £45. Comfortably. Maybe a bit more, but i got to do a bit of research on it first to find out. But I love it. Oh, i got bags of the stuff, guys. You'd have to bear with me. I've got collectors coming in buying as much cut glass and crystal as I can get. So, beautiful cut bat pattern to it. It's probably Stuart Crystal. I'll have to have a proper look, give it a wash, have a proper look, see if I can see the, um, the make, the signature. Really is beautiful cut, guys. It's about a kilo, kilo and a half of cut crystal. That's really heavy piece of crystal. Fully cut, quality piece of crystal. Paid a fiver for that. But I'm selling crystal vases of that quality for 20, 25 pound all day, every day in the shop. Not a problem at all. Another piece that they paid a fiver for. This one's actually got a big polished pontal on it. 
Don't know who it is yet, but again. Just give you a look there. The quality of these pieces is absolutely superb. Again, it's going to be 20 quid with my eyes closed. You know, another fiver. Another piece of crystal, guys, same buyer, uh, same seller rather. And again, it was a fiver. This one I think is Bohemian. And what we have is a letter rack. Put your letters in. Haven't seen one of them, not for a long time. Don't know if you can see the patterns on there. Real nice quality, thick, heavy crystal. You can see the colours. Again, it's going to be 15 or 20 pound, no problem at all in the shop. And again, I paid a fiver. So for £15 outlay, I'm going to get between 50 and 60 back comfortably on that crystal. It's all perfect, it's all proper cut crystal, cut glass. I don't buy pressed glass unless it's early. Um, this is all fine cut crystal, guys. Oh yeah. Another piece. This one here was £3, and this is signed Stuart Crystal. Don't know if you can see the patterns. Beautifully cut. Got these flowers. Don't know what ones they are yet. Real nice shape to it. Beautiful quality. Again, it's another £20 lump. No problem at all. I've got... A set of six silver handled knives. Now, they come in cheap because there's a problem with them. Take a look there, I don't know if it's focusing in. Hang on, let me if I go like that in my focus. There you go, can you see here the handle of separated away from the blade? Now I've done a video in the past showing you how to reset the blades and handles tidy. We're doing no damage and no real expense. So I'll reset the, um, the handles onto the one or two that need resetting. Um, it cost me, believe it or not, £8. They come boxed. The box has got a little bit of damage to the hinge, unfortunately. I may be able to repair that. To Minor, it's just come away and it needs a couple of tacks in there so I can repair that and reset them. Here comes my mother. Hello, mum. Hey, baby. Can't see any coming in today, love. Let's see. Get back. Do you want to come say the one before I start? Let me introduce you to my mother, guys. Hi. Elaine, the world, world, Elaine. Hi, world. <laughs> <laughs> Mom is also now jumping on the same boat as me. Let's just hope it's not the Titanic. We're both going to try and learn Chinese. Yep. So, yeah. Let's see how much we can get. <laughs> right, okay, so we'll continue now. We have a 19th century little Vesta. Well, I think it's 19th century, about 1870, 1880. Um, it's in like a terracotta body. And as you can see here, you've got the little match striker here, and you put the little matches and that in there. If it's not 19th century, it's going to be very early 20th century. But I would have thought 1870, 1890, somewhere around there looking at it. Really nice. Do you know, if you went back five, six years ago on eBay, you'd have had 100, 120 quid for that. I paid a fiver this morning. What do I think it's worth? As a nice Vesta case, £35, £40. Right, I have a pair of square candlesticks. No, they're not Georgian, unfortunately. But they are a nice pair of 19th century brass candlesticks. Now what you're looking for with the early brass ones, you want to see seams running down either side. Seam sticks is a good way, indicator of 18th century. Uh, these also have the push rod where the earlier ones didn't. Um, but a nice pair of 
brass candlesticks. They came in this morning for six pound. Worked out about six pound. I'm gonna get 25, 30 pound for that. That pay no problem at all. Faithful Swarovski crystal. Frosky crystal is Austrian crystal guys at its finest and we have a rose brooch Absolutely gorgeous There we go As you can see there what a beautiful piece of Swarovski crystal It's hard to see with no backing. Uh, I don't want to drop it There we go and it comes boxed and perfect and signed always have the little swan on them they do Oh. Right, this little one is uh, <laughs> is quite poorly. We have a beautiful, lucky black cat produced by Goble, Hamel Goble. Unfortunately, he's lost his whiskers on this side. Um, and I don't know if these whiskers are right, so what I'll probably do is pull these whiskers out as well Sell him just as a beautiful porcelain cart by Goble and let someone else put a couple of whiskers in there if they wish But it is nice cost me three pound this morning As I say, it's got the Goble mark, but it's not the early mark, but it's still got the Goble mark 1960 I think is underneath but yeah, yeah 1960 so that could be the pattern number or it could be the date for some more fine crystal for you. Absolutely spectacular shape, love the shape. Crystal decanter, can't see a signature on it but that is absolutely gorgeous. Cost me four pounds. Four pounds for a decanter like that. Eh? You, <laughs> you wouldn't have got to it if I got to it first. <laughs> Stop that. We've had a lady coming in the shop asking over and over and over for a glass dressing table set. Um, we have got them, but they're all packed away and we haven't been able to get to them. But guess what I bought this morning? Yep. And I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to pass it to Mum to have her to put it all together for me and then I'll show you. Yeah, if you can do that for me, Mum, in a minute, please. Once Mum's built it all up, I'll show you that. In the meantime, I'm going to show you a couple of paperweights. Now this is a Millifiori paperweight. It's got some age. It's got a large polished pontal to the base. It's had a bruise polished off by there. So somebody actually valued it enough to have a little bruise polished off. Two of them in fact, one there, one there. Uh, looking at it, I'd say it's a Victorian Millifiori. It's not signed. And I, what you gotta look for with these paperweights Inside the canes, they can have a little cane, special cane that can tell you who made them. Um, like white friars have a little, can have a little monk in their canes. <coughs> Excuse me. I said that stop the paper. Uh, so always check inside the canes as well as underneath the paperweights um, for signatures. This one cost me a pound this morning. And then we have a beautiful paperweight with what flowers are, man? Looks like a rose. Could be anything. Yeah, looks a bit like a rose, but we don't know. This one I think is Chinese. It's got a sliced pontal to the base. Real nice quality to your mind. Beautiful paperweight, as you can see. Again, cost me a pound. So I'm over the moon with that. The two paperweights, they cost me a pound each. I'm probably going to put £15 each on them in the shop. Again, I think we have another... What do you think that is, man? Same sort of vein? Yeah. Remnant of the matter here? Remnant of the 
it looks along the same sort of vein as the bamboo vases and that. Not a hundred percent. But it has that look, so I'll have to do a little research on there. But it has the look of the like the bamboo vases, even though it's not a bamboo vase. Uh, this one though has a polished pontal to the base. You can see the price. One pound fifty. Uh, but again, even as a piece of art glass, it's going to be a 10, uh, but if I can attribute it to Ramaki or Hyman or Glassy Glass or something like that, then it may be up 15, 20 pounds in my opinion. It's not polished on the base, sorry guys, it's just the indentation where it was moulded and pressed into the mould. No, I've took the price off. Mike. It's gorgeous, Vance. I've got a polish pond blend, it hasn't. Right, dressing till the set finished? Yeah. What do you that? Very pretty, and the tray is gorgeous. Look at that. I tell you what, I'm going to put it down, I'm going to move the camera to show you. i got to give it a wash, and uh, then it'll be going out. Right, hang on, guys. There we go. Mum, can you see the screen? Is it clearly visible on it? Yeah, but all this is as well. That doesn't matter. I can't see because the screen's up. So that's the dressing table set, guys. <laughs> when can you ever find a full dressing table set when you need it under a fiver? Would you pay for that? Three quid. Oh my gosh. Julian. Lovely. You haven't been able to sell any. You've had it on his store for weeks. I haven't been down there. But of course, nobody's been able to sell anything in January. It's been terrible, hasn't it? Yeah. I've got a load of jewellery. I'll show you the jewellery in just a minute. I want to get through the weapons first. Start, start with this, whatever you call it. Looks hand carved. It is hand carved. It's not Japanese, is it? No. It's, um, yeah, do you know what? I'm not 100% with it myself. Looks touristy to me, to be honest with you. It's probably a Chinese piece, Chinese tourist piece. Hang on, I'm going to put it back together. Last thing I'm going to do is cut my hand off. Uh, it's all carved. It's no age to it, guys. It's a modern piece. But at the same time, <laughs> we know where it's going. Careful of the string. for a blade. Full set of marks there. Gotta do a bit of research. I think these were used for cutting uh, crops and things. Um, like a grain cutter or something like that. But uh, yeah, and somebody's sharpened the bloody thing as well. What the hell do you want to use that for? I don't know. The weapons are not staying here anyway, man. They go no. Maybe I'll put it in the box. Not leaving weapons like it's in the shop. We have a dagger. Looks like Rambo's. Uh, stainless steel. <laughs> Just call me a Rambo. No nipping needles in the end. <laughs> what can I say, man? It all just came in this morning. Uh, these are normally Middle Eastern uh, Persian curved blade inlaid in the handle. It's a lion's head on the back end. Whoa, it doesn't go in there tidy. Careful now, I'm going to lose a finger. You're putting it's, it in wrong, yeah? No, I'm not putting it in wrong. It's uh, the case has been broken off. Anyway. They're all still there. Do you want to look, do you? Careful with your fingers are sharp. The only way you can make a profit on the boot sale lately. <laughs> <laughs> Rob them. <laughs> um, who's this by? Bunting Super. 
Uh, ideal. I don't really know. It's a toy, but we all know where it's going, guys. It's going to John. All these weapons go to John. He collects them. This is a cap gun. I haven't oh. had one for years. <laughs> You bought us these from Spain years ago. Years ago. And we have another knife. This one looks a better quality fishing knife by the looks of it. Oh, look at that blade. Anglo Arms. So that's a proper fishing fillet knife. Look at that. Give me your That one may end up going to dad. <laughs> now that's a knife. Nice knife. <coughs> and in Maclet. Sharp condition. With a nice sheath too. You want to look at this one or not? Not if you give it to Dad. I, I haven't decided it. yet whether he's having it or whether I'm selling it. I don't know yet. I had the two small curved blades to go with that big curved one as well. It always comes as a set. And here is my fishing gaff that I told you about. So that will extend out. That'll have to cut it out. Why? I can sell it in the shop, thank you. So anyway, that'll you extend know. out probably a bit more than that. Don't know how. Oh, you have to do one. Hang on. Then go and screw it. Come on, any time today. No, that comes off. Put them back together. Tell about that sharp bloody hook. Anyway, have a nice fishing gaff here, guys. For dragging the nice catch out of the water. And if you want to try and uh, be like my dad and say he has them but he puts them back, <laughs> that's fine, you don't want this. You have to put the fresh water ones back. The coarse fishing, the coarse yes, fishing but uh, nice gaff. So all them weapons and the gaff, the dagger, everything, all of the weapons combined cost me £20. So how much are you selling the gaff for? Probably the £20 that uh, I paid. Well I'll give you 10 for your dad. We may, uh, oh, go on in here. And that owes me a tenner for all the weapons. There you go, I just sold a gaff. Want that one for another tenner now? No, uh, go on. Right, there you go, my money's back. Mum's just give me 20 quid. John will have the rest then. That's so right. that way, John will step out of the He doesn't have them now, he, but they all put away for him. He has them all. So, there you go, I just made my first £20 back. <laughs> now we come to the better pieces. No, I ain't finished. I'm showing you jewellery and I haven't finished the bloody best stuff yet. One of my favourite pieces of the day. Right. Retro. Look at that. What a beautiful piece of 20th century design. 60s. She's this good watches. Who made it? I can't remember. Okay, what country is it made in? Here. Oh no. No. Oh no. This is the finest Kaiser porcelain, German porcelain. Oh, thank you, brother. Cobalt, fine porcelain, Kaiser. There you go, guys. What a beautiful piece of design by the best porcelain, well, apart from Meissen and all that, you know, Kaiser's right up there is a fine, fine porcelain. Beautiful, beautiful design. I paid £15 for this this morning. What do I think it's worth? I think about £55, £60, no problem at all. Absolutely love it. But it may be an internet job, not a shop job. So I love that. That is got to be my favourite buy of the day, to be honest with you. I love the design and I love the quality. Banging with quality. As soon as I saw the design across the boot, I had to go running for it. What do you think? It's lovely, I like it. Isn't it gorgeous? Yes, yeah, beautiful. Last piece of ceramic glass is a candelabra. You can't see the quality of the uh, crystal on the film, I'm sorry to say. This weighs about a kilo and a half. Every single piece is cut glass all over it. It's cut it's everywhere. Not faster, is it? Better than that. This is a piece of Val Saint Lambert. 
Fully signed, hard to read, but it's spell Saint Lambert. And that's an eBay job. It's not eBay. So, right by there is the signature. I don't know if you can see it on the camera or not. We can't on our screen. Beautiful, beautiful piece. Real heavy, real quality. Stunning. I paid a tenner for it. Oh, but a piece of Val Saint Lambert that size. 55, 75, somewhere around that price range, it should be. Easy. Should be. You know, you'll get 15, 20 pounds for a little piece of Val Saint Lambert. And um, that is. A centerpiece. That's a candelabra centerpiece. Yeah. It's gorgeous. 75 quid, I would imagine. But I think, again, that's going to be on the website as opposed to in the shop for the plain and simple reason. In the shop, what they want, a beautiful quality piece of crystal like I've already shown you at 15s and 20 pounds, where having the signature and the quality of that candelabra really elevates it up to a higher price, but they're not going to appreciate it in the shop. You need a collector to appreciate that type of thing. Now we come along to the jewellery guys. It's not all brilliant, but it is some nice bits of jewellery. We have a silver and cubic zirconia necklace. I don't think it's focusing. I'll tell you what I'm doing. I'll stop the camera and I'm going to turn it around so you can get them on film. Okay guys, so I'm going to show you the jewellery now. We've got a beautiful entwined silver bangle. Loops on the ends and it's entwined. That's really nice. Got a good weight to that too. We've got a beautiful crystal, uh, cubic zirconia and solid silver pendant and chain a millifiori pendant set in solid silver solid silver locket solid silver tree of life ring solid silver ring with depicting elephants a gents nine carat gold ring with polished stone nice weight to that one, that's four grams that is We got a whole job lot of different bits and bobs in here, badges, necklaces, bit of scrap and so on. We have a silver chain and a Dutch windmill pendant there. Now all our jewellery cost me £50 for all of it. But to be honest though, there's going to be £65 back on the ring. Uh, there's nearly £50 of scrap. So. I'll chuck another 10 or 15 pound on top of it and that'll be the money back for the on the ring alone. The rest of it is my profit. I have a little bit of scrap, a little bit to sell out of here. Some of these little charms, they to sell. People collect those. Um, I got another charm, hang on. Where is it? Love this one. Okay, one more second, guys. Here we go. Can you see that? A Victorian silver elephant. Absolutely beautiful. Real nice quality. Needs a loop on it, but absolutely stunning. So, there's my jewellery haul. And I got two, la two more things to show you. Do you want to put that up here, Mum? The, the paperweight. Not in the box. Yeah, uh, bring it up. Here we have, guys, is my final piece of glass it is by a company called what's the name titot titot it's a chinese company and it is a paperweight in uranium crystal and it is fine crystal it has the emperor dragon inside as you can see there glows in the dark there's the titot we're going to do a little experiment now to show you a glow in the dark yeah man under uv light do you want to go back under the table with yeah. the light? When you're looking for uranium glass and uh, that type of glass, guys, use a little blue light. I'll show you mom's now in a minute. And you'll see it glowing up. All right. Go under there. You'll have to excuse the mess in there, guys. Go ahead, I need more dark. Darker. There you go. You can see the colour change, different light. Yellow. And put the light over it and it goes luminous green. I'll do man. 
as you can see, absolutely beautiful paperweight. It's boxed, they've got papers of authenticity and everything. That cost me a fiver this morning and I really love it. Love the colour, love the dragon design, love it all. I'm going to research the maker later and see what it sells for. Now when you're buying Art Deco glass and that, if it glows under, your, under ultraviolet light, it's worth more than if it doesn't. People tend to pay a premium. This is Mam's light and you literally just throw the switch. You can have normal torch or you throw the switch that way and you have the blue light. They're not expensive. What do you pay for that one? Five, ten quid? Don't know, can't remember. It won't, won't be a lot of money, guys. You can buy that for about a tenner. And when you're out and about, you can scan over your pieces, see if they're proper uranium. And I tell you another thing it's good for, looking for restoration on porcelain. If you hold up a piece of fine porcelain, you put one of these over it, you'll see any restoration will glow up blue. So these are a good tip to have in your bag all, all the time. My final piece on the day, guys, is a beautiful little watercolour. Little. <laughs> it's a castle on a hill of some description. It's not signed or named or titled or anything like that, but it is a nice watercolour. Now, the mount has come away from it, and the mount is all dirty and tarty, as you can see, and stained, water stained from the years and years. What's that on the back of the mount? price tag. <coughs> um, so what I intend to do, let me just show you the painting out of the mount. What I intend to do is I intend to go to my local pound store, my cheapy store, and I'm going to buy some cheap gold spray, spray paint, and I am going to spray this gold, antique gold, to hide all this water damage and that, because to buy a new mount like this is probably going to be about a fiver where I can buy a can of spray paint for a couple of pounds. Re-glue it back to the board after it's sprayed and it will look beautiful. Not only will it set the picture off in gold, it will enhance the picture without a shadow of doubt having a gold uh, mount on there. It won't be too rich a gold, but then it'll be secured up and I'll probably chuck a 45 or 50 pound price tag on that and let them frame it. That was a pound, Julian again. He sells all his paintings for a pound. Um, a few weeks ago I had a three foot square, three foot, mind, massive, of the Moulin Rouge by uh, Toulouse Le Trek off him for a pound. Toulouse Le Trek? Okay. It was a copy, somebody oh, copied nice. it, but it was an absolutely amazing copy. And that was only a pound. He's, um, I think it was a pound or three pound now, it might have been. But he's literally one or two pound across the board on his paintings. It's so cheap. Unbelievable what you can buy down in this plot. That's um, about it guys for my buys, what do you think? <laughs> Absolutely amazing, huh? Let's just say mum will be there on the weekend. Wanna, wanna prove me wrong? in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> no, dad's going fishing tomorrow. Right, uh, just before I finish up, I'm going to add a link to Kirsten's Curiosities underneath the video, guys. Um, just as my way of saying thank you for the shout out she done the other day. Don't forget to click on the link and go check her out. Other than that, I think I'm done. You'll find me on Facebook, I have a page on the group Antiques Arena. You'll find me on my own website, antiquesarena.co.uk, or come visit us in the shop, 78 Oxford Street, Mountain Ash, Charlie Fox Road, 453 Hotel Bravo. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye for now. Bye.